guys. Sorry about that. I didn't know who was going to talk first. It's Barb and Robin with Halfway Way to Sane. Sane. Welcome to our channel. Thank you if you're back for more. Um, we're going to do, we're going to focus today. Um, well, let's get started with the, it is June 28th, 2021. And we're going to focus on doing some crime concerning children. Um, it's all mostly stories from anywhere from like, I think it's March until June, um, 2021. And I'm going to warn you now that if you have any, um, PSTD issues or, um, what words am I looking for? Um, child. Yeah, anything that would be concerning that you wouldn't want to watch it, I wouldn't watch the video. Um, yeah, just... Viewer discretion is advised. Yes, concerning types of um, SCX acts, acts um, especially to children. That's what we're trying to focus on here is to get Babies. the word out um, that people are not going to be afraid to make that phone call. Um, to have somebody come and check on, you know, whatever they hear or seen or uh, whatever. So, you know, that's our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's our John, 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 no, 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 no. That's our claim to let you know. Turn this off right oh, now. Our disclaimer. Yes. Um, disclaimer. Turn this off now if you have any issues with any of that stuff because we really don't want to be um, the ones to aggravate something or bring something up that you know is bothersome to you but um, we have some things written down and I'm sorry that they're written down and they're not you know stuck in my head um, I can only remember things if they're written down so with that being said this first um, story is it came from the insider and this is about a young boy that him and his family were um, you know that these things had happened to him and his entire family so um, the murder suspect is actually the father um, and he is accused of shorting shooting his girlfriend axing his nine-year-old daughter and then stabbing his son and setting his son on fire um his son was the i believe the only one that survived this incident and he testified in court against his father um his father tried to um uh, he didn't get a lawyer. He tried to do things on his own. Um, but the young boy was cross-examined. Um, and he... Act oh, this bothers me. He testified on the fact that, you know, his dad um, killed his girlfriend. And how he axed his nine-year-old daughter, who also had cerebral palsy so I don't know how severe the cerebral palsy was with her um, if she was able to fight back or not fight back or whatever happened in that um, but the boy when he was cross-examined by his father the father asked him um, did I hurt you did I do anything to hurt you and the boy stated yes you did you you stabbed me and you know you set you set the house on fire so um he was able to stand up for himself and and testify against his dad so his dad was actually charged with two counts of first degree murder and one count of attempted murder and um this happened in 2018 and he is um in florida he is you know behind bars in florida where he belongs um 
<sighs> I, I just am so disgusted by it. Legal experts suggest that O'Neill's cross-examination will backfire on him many because many people try to defend themselves in court, but typically don't in civil or misdemeanor cases and certainly not murder trials. The challenges um, defendants face against experienced prosecutors are often insurmountable and the judge will let them crash and burn without assisting. The jurors also heard a 911 call from the house. The, the girlfriend made the phone call in which you, you can hear her desperately pleading for help, um, screaming at him. Um, and it's just a terrifying thing to hear on tape. Um, that that's basically that's basically the story i mean this is just a piece of crap father who maybe he didn't want to be responsible for anything and anyone anymore so he actually thought he could get away with this which i don't understand why people think they can get away with this kind of thing disgusting yeah is that all you have to say on that matter <laughs> yeah, I'll wait until the end of this oh, one. Oh my goodness, yeah, she's okay. got a doozy. I have a doozy. It's from Newsweek, dated June 21st, 2021. Okay, this one is very sickening. Pedophilia sold... A, a pedophilia sold box sets of child PORN around the world. Targeted nearly two thousand people. A pedophile who posed as a wealthy stockbroker to lure and then blackmail his victims into sending him sex abuse images sold the material to other offenders as a box box set. So gross. Uh, I, I'll just wait. Abdul Hasabid Elahai, 26 year old, years old, targeted nearly 2,000 people across the world. Mm. Some of his victims were as young as eight months old. Get that, people. Eight months, not even one year old yet. And if any of you were following the Josh Duggar case, you know some of those children, the oldest or the youngest was 18 months old. So this went with babies, little, little tiny babies. According to the UK's National Crime Agency, this is where this story, I guess he lived or... Mm -hmm. She's from the UK. Okay. Um, who were in... Wait. Uh, la, 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 la. According to the National Crime Agency, Alahai from England singled out victims who were in debt or too young to legitimately legitimately be on a website called Sugar Daddy. He then tricked them into sending him naked or partially clothed images of themselves. The agency described the case which saw victims blackmailed into abusing themselves or their siblings and their children as some of the worst, most sickening sexual offending it has ever investigated. Ella, 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 oh God, I can't say his Ella name. Ella High. Ella High, who is actually unemployed, promised victims payment of thousands of dollars for posed images and even sent fake screenshots of money leaving his account. Sick. When he received enough revealing images, he threatened to expose the pictures and expose pictures to the victims' families and friends unless they sent more money. Many victims were reportedly so terrified they felt they had no choice. Elahai, Elahai's offenses included forcing victims to abuse themselves in the in sickening ways including self-mutilization blackmailing women to send him footage of them abusing young children 
and making girls abuse siblings. That is... It's disgusting. Oh, my word. It's appalling. Elahai sought sexual gratification from having power and control of his victims. And he's displayed zero empathy for them. He often goaded them into the point of wanting to kill themselves. Well, yeah. I mean, he's just a sick animal. An investigation across multiple jurisdictions, including the FBI, revealed there was at least 196 victims in the UK, as well as victims in 20 other countries, including the US, Austria, Canada, and New Zealand. A further 600 people were found to have been contacted online by uh, uh, whatever his name is, in the UK, <laughs> and another 1,367 women, which he tried to contact in the USA. Lovely. There's more, people. There's more. The investigation also revealed Elahai had systematically categorized categorized all the abuse within cloud storage sites and then sold the contents as a box, box set like you would buy a box set of CDs or CD movies or you know yeah. just uh, it, oh gross through through the cloud and via the encrypted app telegram he also provided online monster classes on the app to other offenders, teaching them how to blackmail victims and obtain indecent images from children without being caught. He is believed to have made more than $35,000 through this scheme. Elahai has admitted to the charges. He admitted to the charges relating to 150 offenses, including blackmail, disclosing private photos, disturbing indecent images, causing a child to engage in sexual exploitation of a child and pa posing more than 65,000 indecent images of children, including babies being raped. It's, I, I can't even... I, I can't even imagine. It, this just, isn't... It's not a, a chuckle laugh. It's a disgusted... Uh, the 26-year-old predator was initially arrested by National Crimes Agency officers on December 19, 2018, following an allegation that he was blackmailing a 15-year-old girl in the U.S. His cell phone and computers were seized and forensically examined. He was charged by the Crown Prosecution Service and remanded in August 2020. So it took two years to charge him. Mm -hmm. Cook commended the victims in the case for their bravery, saying the, uh, the effects of El Elahai's abuse would continue throughout the rest of their lives, and it will. Sadly, there are very many very many offenders like Elahai who mask their real identity with convic convincing persons to exploit both children and adults. Elahai is to be sentenced on September 9th at Birmingham Crown Court. The Revenge PORN helpline said the organization has been working with the NCA to remove the online content on behalf of the victims for over 18 months. They have managed to remove thousands of images, but there is more outstanding and the work will continue for many, many months to come. The content is some of the most extreme that the helpline has ever dealt with. This is not simply nudity or sexual gratification. It is violent, degrading, and deeply harmful. The impact of the shaming of this, wait, the share, the impact of the sharing of this content 
is devastating and life-changing and should not be underestimated. Yeah, it's disgusting. That's all I can say. Wasn't there a phone number? It might be on that page over there. Or let me see this page. There might be a little bit more. Okay, then. We had a mishap with all our papers um, yesterday, and they got coffee spilled all over them. So I apologize for... Yeah. Um, it's not on here. All right. There's a number that I can't remember what the number was. Hello. Bright light. Bright oh, light. it's on the next story. Um, so, well, okay. actually, I can give it to you now, too. Um, you can call 1-800-TBI-FIND. All right, you can call that number if you have any kind of tips or whatever with any stories or any thoughts or, you know, whatever. Um, but that's a good phone number. The call and I will mention it again when I go over this story. This story that I just read is unbelievable and it's as disgusting. Far as nobody should ever have to go through it or even read about it. Well, the guy is guilty. If the guy Obviously. is guilty, just put him behind bars. There should be no trial. If he is if he is admitting that he is guilty, he said, Yes, I am guilty. Why is there a trial? See ya. Bye. Yeah, bye. Let's so lock long. the door. Forget about you. But well, I put these victims through, through this whole thing. Just how the um, well, it's not fair to the victims. No, it's not. But they have to go through the legal system, and that's the way the legal system handles it. So okay, it sucks, move on. But, yeah, let's move on. This is a story that's still, um, it's still going on. Nobody's been prosecuted yet. And as a matter of fact, has to do with a little girl who hasn't even been found yet. So I have some thoughts about what I think could have happened. I'm sure you will delve into the fact that, you know, something that you don't like or you think is wrong. But um, this is that this was gotten from the news and the observer at this point. So it's what happened to Summer Wells. Um, she, lives, she lives in Tennessee. This news story broke on June 21st, 2021. And as I stated, it's still an ongoing um, situation. So Summer was act actually outside planting flowers with her mom and her grandmother outside their home. They share um, a house with her parents and three older brothers. Um, it's in a, it's in a rural area in Tennessee. And before she went inside to play with her toys, her father stated, um, that she, oh, uh, something got messed up here too. So I apologize. Um, her brother stated that she did come into the house, but she went downstairs to go play with her toys. When her mother actually went to go look for her, she went through the house through the upstairs but then she went downstairs where she stated she was going to go play down in the basement and she was gone and the door was open that's according to her mother and she claims that she went out the basement door and has not been seen or heard from since so search teams have spent six days at that point it's more now um today's the 28th so you got a whole week to add on there um they've They've combed thousands of acres of rugged terrain for the five-year-old who was reported missing around 6.30 p.m. on June 15th in Hawkins County, about 30 miles from North Carolina border. Um, the Tennessee State Border of Investigation issued an Amber Alert for summer the next day. At least 35 agencies from Tennessee and the surrounding states have assisted in the search. Though they have covered about 2,400 acres, the squad said search efforts have been slowed by the area's rugged mountain terrain. So if it's difficult for adults to get around on that terrain, it's uh, definitely harder for a five-year-old child. Summer went missing from the family home on Ben Hill Road in the com community of Beach Creek 
where officials said neighbors are few and far between. The road which juts off a state highway is less than a mile long and dead ends at a dense forest surrounded by rocky peaks. Summer is roughly three feet tall, about 40 pounds, blonde hair, and blue eyes. They urged residents who live near, near Ben Hill Road in North Carolina to check their trail or surveillance cameras for video or photos of summer. Here's that phone number again. Call 1-800-T-B-I-FIND with information. Info. Every detail, no matter how small, is important to this matter. As of June 15th, the police department have received 137 tips, but the circumstance of her disappearance remains unclear. For Summer's father, all signs point to abduction. She, she would never leave the hill. I think someone snuck up on her and grabbed her. I don't think she's in the area because the search dogs go down and down the road, and that's the end of the trail for the dogs. Um, that's pretty much the story on self, summer, summer. There's been no additional information that's been given since June 21st um, that are related to this case. So if you think you have anything at all, please call the phone number that was provided and, you know, don't hesitate to call them and, you know, give them whatever information you may have. And you know, with the summer case, as well as with a very um, popular case that went on for years. Um, Duggar? Josh no, oh. um, the uh, uh, Smart. Girl. Oh, the Elizabeth Smart, yes. You know, she was, what, a quarter mile yeah, up in like that. the terrain behind her house. She could hear her father speaking yelling for her so we don't know what went on um but i mean it, i mean she could be anywhere you know um she she could be the past work you know worst situation or you know she could be somebody could have them in her home um somebody who wanted a, a daughter or you yeah. know unfortunately I don't even want to imagine what could have been done to her. Um, I'm praying that nothing bad has happened to her and she is safely returned to her family. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to go over this one. Um, but I think we're going to end our time here. Um, if there's anything else that you can think of to say. Just watch your children. Yeah. Watch your neighbor's children. Yeah. Hug your kids. Give them a, a you know, a kiss to every day and, you know, be thankful that you're not having to go through this yourself. So I think it's time for us to sign out. Peace. And we're out of here.